Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video we'll talk about holograms. And no, this is not another tutorial about holographic shaders, but I rather want to show you the whole process of creating this point cloud hologram, and how we can even integrate it into background footage. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday, and with that said, let's get straight into the video. To get hold of a dense colored point cloud, I'm using Meshroom, which is a photogrammetry program. It is completely free and a new version has been released, which is called 2020.1.1. For this video, I'm using a photogrammetry model of a human. To get datasets like this, I just searched for human photogrammetry dataset and went with this GitHub right here. The link is also in the video description. The user provided 88 images of a human and we can use these images to create a point cloud. Now that I've downloaded all the images, you can see that they are pretty high res, 4K each. This is way too much for us, so let's downscale them. And we're gonna do this in Blender. Over in Blender, we can change our main window to the video sequencer, sequencer slash preview, go to add, image sequence, navigate to our image folder and with A select everything, add to image strip. I know that this image sequence has 88 images so I will set the end frame to 88 and before we render let's also set our view transform to standard. This way we do not affect the colors. But you can see that the resolution is wrong so let's right click on any image and have a look and we can now copy this resolution over into Blender. And now, with the correct resolution applied, we can use 50% of it to correctly downscale our images. After you've set your output folder, you can render out your images with Ctrl and F12. But I suggest you to set the compression rate to 0% before doing so. Great, and just like this, every single image has been downscaled. And now we can go back into Meshroom and drag and drop all of these images into your image panel. Now you can see that in Meshroom we have all of these different nodes. There are already great tutorials out there on how to use Meshroom. I will just show you how to export a colored point cloud. To do this you can see that I moved both of these nodes up because we don't need them. We only need the output of the meshing node. First of all, go up here into the menu and check advanced attributes and now you should see both of these options pop up. We want to enable both the save dense point cloud and colorize output option. Let's right click and search for the node export colored point cloud and connect it to the output. And the last node we have to add is convert SFM format, which we can hook up to the output of the previous node. And now we want to choose PLY and unknown. This file type can be imported into Blender using external add-ons. And once you've saved your project, you can click on start and Meshroom will export your point cloud. Once Meshroom is finished, you'll see a new folder pop up, which is called Meshroom Cache. In it, we want to navigate to our convert SFM format folder and check if the sfm.ply file is present, and it is, and so everything has worked correctly. We can now import it into Blender. To do so, we will need a point cloud visualizer add-on, and I will use this one right here. The link to this GitHub is also in the video description. To install it, download it with this button right here, and then unzip it. Now in Blender, we can go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and locate this Python file. After pressing on Install Add-on, you can enable the Point Cloud Visualizer. Okay, now we're all set up and we can import our Point Cloud. But I also want to show you how to integrate the Point Cloud into video footage. So we'll start by setting up a simple tracking workspace. I will not go over this in detail because I've showed you in my last tutorial how to do so. But very quickly we can go up here, VFX motion tracking and open our footage as an image sequence. And after you've set your scene frames and prefetched everything, we can start tracking. Again if you want a full tutorial on that you can visit my last video. But basically you just add tracking markers wherever you think a good point would be and with having them selected and then pressing Ctrl and T we can track them forward. If they stop tracking, we can go one frame forward, place them manually and again track forward. You want to repeat this for at least 8 points, so you can solve your camera correctly. You can see that in this blend file I have already tracked all of the points, and now we are ready to solve our camera motion. 
we just click on Solve Camera Motion in the Solve panel. You can see that we get a solve error of 0.52, which is great. We always want to have a solve error under 1, but we can refine it a little bit by inputting our correct sensor width. If you don't know your focal length, you can also solve for it. So let's again solve camera motion. It didn't go any lower, but now we have our correct focal length right here in the lens tab. Great, let's click on set background and set up tracking scene. And now you can see that everything has been set up for us, but the cube as well as the ground aren't moving with our world ground. So let's firstly set our origin to right here, set our scale by using two points and the correct distance. This is maybe about seven centimeters. So let's put in 0.07 as a distance and click on set scale. And you can see that this moved our origin and also of course relatively to our camera everything got a lot bigger. So let's scale both of these objects down. So let's again set our origin and now set our floor. For this we need three tracking points and this can sometimes be a little bit tricky and you just have to eyeball it. And I think this looks good. And now we have set up our tracking scene. Back over in the layer tab, if you do not see your motion tracking markers, you can enable them with this checkbox right here. And now we can finally import our hologram. Firstly, we do not need any lights, so we can delete it. Because this hologram is just made out of light, it won't be affected by any lights in our scene. And we also do not need this cube right here, so let's delete it too. Before we import our hologram, let's set up our scene. So let's rotate this ground plane, scale it up, so it fits our needs. And now, to import the hologram, we need a mesh, which it can be drawn to. So let's add in a single vert. To get this option, to add a single vert, you will have to enable the extra objects add-on, which is already inbuilt into Blender, so this shouldn't be a huge problem. And now with the Point Cloud Visualizer add-on enabled, we can select this vertex and choose a PLY file. This is going to be this one right here. Let's click on Load PLY. And once it has loaded, we can click on Draw. Now you can see that a Point Cloud has been imported. But this of course is way too much, we only want the human. So let's go to edit, enable edit mode. And in wireframe mode we can press C and select all of the vertices we do not need. And now let's go X and delete vertices, click on update and end. And this is our final point cloud. For me the best way to render these point clouds is to convert them into a particle system. So let's go to the convert panel choose Particle System and click on Convert. Once this is done, we can go into Edit Mode of our newly created object and position and scale it correctly. And now our hologram sits correctly on the ground floor, but the particles are way too big, so let's select the object and choose a proper size. Let's also move it to the side so it makes a little bit more sense and move this point cloud object into the foreground collection. You can see that now an icosphere pops up this is parented as a particle to this object, so let's also move it to the foreground. The vertex we just added can now be deleted. Okay, great, everything works fine. But you can see that if we play our animation, the particles disappear after frame 50. This is because the lifetime is set to 50. Let's set it to 250, which is the length of our entire sequence. Let's next worry about the material. So under Viewport Display, let's choose Rendered as our display. And you can see that now the icosphere is being shown, but it is way too big, so let's set the scale to 0.1 and maybe even lower. 0.02 looks good. And I also like to set the scale randomness to 0.5. To adjust the material, we have to select our icosphere. And you can see that the add-on provides a baked texture, which we also have to save. This is indicated by this little asterisk up here. So let's go to image and save as and save it. But you can see that if we try to preview it in Eevee, it doesn't really work. For this texture to load correctly, we have to be in cycles. And now to make it a cool holographic shader, we can add a color ramp as well as an emission shader, connect them and give our point cloud some nice colors. And just like this, we have a nice shader. This can be a little bit bright, but we can fix it later in the compositing workspace. Also, the particle doesn't make any sense there, so let's move it out of frame. Awesome. The only thing that is left to do now before we can render is to catch all of the spill light onto our scene. So let's switch to the background view layer. And by the way, 
I explained all this in my previous video, so if you're confused by view layers, just watch my previous tutorial. In the background you can see that we are catching a shadow. This doesn't make any sense because our hologram is only emissive. So in the object properties panel, let's disable shadow catcher. And now you can see that we are starting to see some glow. But this cannot really be added on top of the footage. For this to be done correctly, we have to set our world background to black and give this background plane a black principled BSDF. And now we should be able to just add this image on top of our footage. You can also adjust the roughness to get different spill lighting. Great, now we could render our scene. Before you do so, make sure your background is set to transparent. And let's click on F12. Awesome, we now have everything rendered. But you can see that the default compositing doesn't work right here. So let's go to the compositing workspace and have a look. You can see that we are using alpha over nodes. These are set as default from Blender, but they do not make any sense in our scene. So let's select them and click X to delete. To mix our shadow as well as the hologram together, we'll use mix nodes. So connect your background to the first input and the shadow to the second one and choose either screen or add. You can see that we do not see any of the spill light right here. So let's make it a lot brighter using RGB curves. We can just make a point right here and drag it upwards. And now you can see that we are starting to see spill light. Let's add our hologram on top. And now everything makes sense. Of course, we would want to delete all of the points right here, but this is of course up to you. We also need to color match our hologram to the background. And this is just way too saturated, so let's choose a brightness and contrast node and decrease the contrast just like this and now it fits a little bit better. Of course you can now color grade your footage after this screen node but this would break the scope of this video so I want to leave this up to you. And yeah that's it. This is how we can create a point cloud hologram and also integrate it into our scene. If you enjoyed this video consider liking and subscribing and we will see each other in the next video next Saturday.